What's up guys, today I wanted to cover the recent news, that news being that Eleuther AI has announced a 20 billion parameter GPT Neo model. These models are very similar to OpenAI's GPT-3 models. Just like previous works by Eleuther AI, the weights for this model will be released publicly on February 9th. Eleuther AI once again has broken the record for having the largest publicly available pre-trained general purpose autoaggressive language model. It's crazy to think that only a few years ago, the largest model in the world was less than 2 billion parameters. And now we are well over the trillion parameters in some cases. As I said, the weights will be available on the 9th of February, but if we want to, we can access the model now through a service called Goose AI, which we'll check out later in the video. You can go ahead and read this whole blog post if you want. It will of course be linked in the description below. Scrolling down, we can see a variety of metrics and how it compares to other GBT models uh, from OpenAI as well as other publicly released models such as GPTJ. The metrics here show a variety of things such as sentence completion, natural language inference, co-reference resolution, and again, sentence completion. Unless you are familiar with these data sets and metrics, you probably don't have a good idea what these numbers mean, but I think it's still worthwhile to compare these values compared to DaVinci, which is the 175 billion parameter model, and GBTJ, which was the previously largest model from Eleuther AI. And we can see in the total row that the newest model is approaching the performance of DaVinci as it is over 3% better than GPTJ. More interesting metrics include its accuracy on factual knowledge given a subject group. So if you were to ask the large da Vinci model uh, questions about humanity, social science, etc., it would be overall accurate roughly 32% of the time. Uh, the rest of the time it would either give a made up answer or an incorrect answer. And we can see that as the models grow in size with the 20 billion parameter model, we are now at 28% while GBTJ is at 27%. Going over to Goose AI, which for a week will be the only location of the new model, we can see a variety of options that it has, including the massive 20 billion parameter model. When you make a new account, they give you $10 for free, and you can go ahead and use that by going to the playground. And here you can select your model. So we're gonna keep it on the 20 billion parameter model. Something interesting to note is that it only allows an input of 1,024 tokens. I'm not sure if this is an artificial limitation, but GPTJ has a maximum window of 2,048 tokens. Something I thought would be interesting is to take the program I made for GPTJ and run it with the values that you see here and then give it the prompt, a Python program that takes in three arguments and runs the main program and then gives it the if name main. And we'll run that, see what it generates, and then we'll run it with similar settings on Goose AI. So let's go ahead and run this. It's gonna take a bit. And it's done. Looking at what it generated, it actually did pretty well. So we first make the argument parser. We add our three arguments. We then parse these args and put it into a dictionary with the vars command. And then we run the main function with all three arguments. So it actually did exactly what I wanted and I'm actually very impressed. So here we are at Goose AI with similar parameters but not exactly the same. And we gave it the same prompt and let's see what it writes this time. And just as a reminder, this is the 20 billion parameter model. Okay, well, it's generating it now, but it's not quite what I expected. It's definitely a Python program. It looks like it's Python 2. Hmm. Well, I do have to say it's, uh, I don't think it's as good. Maybe it's, maybe it's the values added over here. They are a little different. So maybe that's, uh, the reason or 
I don't know. They are both trained on the pilot data set, which contains code. So I expected this one to be better since it was bigger and since they were on the same data set. But maybe something's going on here. I'm not quite sure. So with that, I'm going to end today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and are excited about the new large models coming out as I am. Of course, once this model is released to the public, I will try exploring it on my own computer. But at the same time, this model likely takes near 40 gigabytes of VRAM, so my options may be limited. But I have a few ideas and will be definitely exploring it a bit and will be sure to share anything interesting I do find. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, be sure to leave a like and subscribe so you can see the new videos as they come out. Also consider joining the Discord. We talk about a variety of tech related topics there and have good chats in my opinion. Thank you so much for watching and please have a great day.